San Francisco saw the highest number of drug overdose deaths in history. The city recorded 806 of these overdose deaths, most of those related to the powerful opioid fentanyl. But health officials say multiple factors play a part. We call on our legislators to make greater investments in behavioral health care, both mental health and substance use treatment. San Francisco alone cannot solve this problem of record overdose deaths. We rely on our city and community partners, our legislators at the local, state, and federal level to join us in this moment to continue to tackle this crisis. So we're still looking for answers to solve this. You heard the doctor there. It is a crisis. It's been an issue our city. In fact, San Francisco, Oakland, many areas of the Bay are dealing with right now. Keep in mind, the previous peak came in 2020 when 726 people died from overdose. Yeah, so this morning, SF Sheriff Paul Miyamoto is joining us. Thank you so much for taking the time. So tell us, you know, what is the city doing right now? I know that there's a task force in place. Gavin Newsom is, you know, putting this on the top of his list. What are you guys actively pursuing? Absolutely. We want to continue our multi-pronged approach to this whole problem. The fatalities are an unfortunate tragedy and the results of this environment that we have. We have multiple agency efforts and multiple disciplines. Uh, the California Health and Safety Code is what dictates uh, what drug use is illegal and the, uh, the different kinds of codes that we have to enforce it. Health and safety is the key here. We have to have a combination of both public health and public safety to confront this problem. Sheriff, as our community grapples and has this conversation, one part of the conversation is forced treatment, be it for addiction or for mental illness. Where is the city on this? You know, there's one perspective that if somebody is forced into treatment, if they're in the throes of drug addiction, it gets their mind clear enough for a, a space of time where they can actually choose to stay clean and sober. Without that on the streets, if you're out there and you want to stay clean and sober, within seconds, all the temptation is all around you. You're absolutely right. Withdrawal management is a very long, very complicated process. Right. And we have to meet people where they are. And mm -hmm. that's the key. People have different trigger points where they are actually going to be able to turn it around for themselves. But we have to make sure that we have all of the different options available to them. So when you talk about harm, uh, harm reduction strategies, that's one component. Law enforcement being out there to disrupt the drug market and drug sales, right. that's yeah. to disrupt that environment so that we can get them into better places and spaces. One of the challenges that we have is treatment isn't 24 hours a day, or at least the resources that we need aren't there 24 hours a day. There was a recent article that said that the law enforcement strategies have just pushed the market to the nighttime. Well, the problem is that we don't have resources in the nighttime to send people to to get them help. But what about forced treatment, forcing them into treatment? When we talk about forced treatment, we put them in a different environment. Withdrawal management is Got one it. of the components. Uh, we always want to meet people with substance use disorders where they are. So when we talk about forced treatment, it's not so much that that's what we want when people become justice involved. It's that we want them to have opportunities to get into treatment on their own. And the only way that you can do that without forced treatment is if people are in withdrawal management and they get that lucidity for a few moments. You mentioned it. Can you go back to the traffickers and how you're approaching that, getting at the root of the problem? The traffickers is where the multi-agency approach is, where we have task forces involved. We recently have formed a fentanyl task force here in the city, which is looking into the fatalities uh, in a collective effort with multi-agencies involved. Sheriff, we appreciate the conversation. Every time I see somebody in the throes of addiction or mental illness, I remember from my own family's personal story, they are somebody, somebody. And we hope that these solutions really can grab on. I know so many people are, are looking to that as we see the election season come up as well. So we appreciate it. Thank you very, Thank very you. much. Sheriff Paul Miyamoto, always a pleasure. Thank you for taking you. the time.